Okay, it's been a while since uh, a new video on the channel. There has just been a lot of stuff going on. I have a new job, a new 10 hour job and next to university and all the preparing that I've done for the recent events uh, in Europe, the European Championship and now the, the YCS in Utrecht. Uh, it, it's just been a lot of time that has gone into Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, so I, I've not been not playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I've just been busy uh, testing for these events. I'm very glad that uh, sort of got something in, in return with, with, with some decent results, but um, just not been as much time for, for creating videos, unfortunately. Hopefully, I'll, I'll get to it again. I do have some stuff filmed. I, I have some ideas in my head that I, I really want to do, but uh, currently uh, there's just uh, not the time to, to, to edit them or, or do something with those ideas. But it's not the topic of today's video. I thought that still uh, there, it would be a nice occasion to talk a little bit about the deck that I used for YCS Utrecht uh, because I think it is an interesting deck to some degree. Maybe there's some value for you in here. Maybe you want to test this deck or play it in some different variant um, for your locals or the coming weeks before the Ishizu stuff is released. I want to show you something before I actually talk about the deck. Uh, why this deck was the one that I chose to play and I want to give a huge shout out to Eli Sirius from a dueling book here he was the one that showed me this combo more or less and was the reason i in the end decided to play this deck so you can normal summon lone fire you can use the effect tribute itself you can summon out the scorpio from your deck use the effect discard any monster so it's a one in the half card combo you summon out the cobra from your deck the cobra can use its effect you search instant fusion you can also search super poly as you just saw but uh, instant fusion is the one that we're going to go for on turn one and then i think a card that has been um, i don't know if slept on but uh, it's just a card that hasn't really seen a lot of play recently is cross sheep so you go instant fusions you pay a thousand life you summon it in the zone of cross sheep you use both cross sheep and kid colors and i think maybe you also um, can already see what this is uh, going to or where this is going to to go so you summon back the lone fire with your cross sheep and then you can use the lone fire to thin out your deck a bit more summon out the other lone fire in this case we already discarded one it was just to show off the combo but usually you can get two more out of the deck and then you summon your theory on lily borea so already you can see that a lone fire alone with one monster in hand gets you to both your tail element engine and your theory on engine which is a pretty crazy part uh, about this deck because it, I've seen uh, a lot of people play the Therion deck and myself I also tested it uh, a lot before uh, before even Power of the Elements came out and I thought that one of the biggest issues with the Therion deck was or the Therion tier element deck was that uh, you have to play a lot of tier uh, a lot of Therion cards to somehow make it consistent but there's no really a way to combine combine the engines in uh, in a constructive way so uh, i think this really you know put everything together more or less you can now use the theory on lily borea discard the uh, merle and get your uh, theory on this colosseum and now you can use the kick colors to get the merle uh, out of the grave again and basically get a plus one uh, with the search as well and you can use now of course merle and uh, kick colors as we already know from you know a hundred thousand combos that we've seen you can now mill eight cards and then you can activate your colosseum and search any Therion monster and equip whatever you want to and then potentially go for um, lines such as here you can go sprite elf uh, or you can um, for example uh, if you mill a Tillament monster you can use the effect of Garura to draw one card then and go into Spider of that way. You can also end on a Hope Harbinger with the uh, Therian Empress Al Alasia, which I will go over in just a moment. But just to give you an idea of how, of how this deck even got to um, exist in the first place, this was, this was the basic combo that uh, sort of, uh, how you can say, convinced me to, to play the deck. I want to say that Danger Tillament was not an option for me because the... Curious line was way weaker without snow, so danger monsters became a lot weaker. The branded version was not strong enough because it couldn't make elf, which elf is a very important card in the runic sprite matchup because it um, makes it so your monsters cannot be targeted. And then you basically had to escape or, 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 or find your way to other supplementary engines. I think the ones that uh, stood out for me was Shadows and Therions. Shadows because... Uh, Shadow Fusion is a crazy card versus Runic Sprite, which one, once again I thought was going to be the most rep represented deck in the tournament. It was going to be a very scary deck to face as well. And Apcalon plus Dragon plus Ariel is a very strong combo versus the Runic Sprite deck. Forces a lot of stuff. And I wanted to play a lot of Shadow cards because I think that the T Element deck suffered a lot from Snow being banned and it suffered a lot of power. So you needed cards that were very good mills. It just didn't feel that 
good. If it didn't feel that great, it was a bit too inconsistent. I mean, what 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 do you expect from Shadows, right? So I had to go to my plan B uh, last minute, which was the theory on deck. So half an hour before the submission of the deck list, uh, I, I I changed to the theory on deck, which. In hindsight, of course, it was a very good decision. Uh, it worked out really well. I think a lot of people have uh, thought about playing Therion with T-Elements as well. It's just that a lot of people, including myself, uh, maybe until two or three weeks before the event, have only thought about playing T-Elements with a few Therions instead of playing a Therion deck with just a few T-Elements. So switch that up because um, once of the, one of the big advantages of Therions in the current format is that there's not really a lot of ways to negate your Therions in hand. And if your Therions hit the board, they're very scary and very difficult to get rid of. A Regulus equipped with a Borea is very, very annoying because it's a searcher, they have to answer to it immediately on summon. Uh, but you can also negate one of their cards that would sort of stop the Regulus in the first place. So it is very, very annoying. And all of these cards. Therion Charge is a crazy card in this format because not a lot of people play Ash. Uh, Agira System is a crazy mill of your Tillaments and this Colosseum is a card that um, many of my opponents didn't read and I won a lot of weird game states only with this card. Uh, the Lone Fire combo was what all sort of glued the whole deck together. Uh, so we play three Lone Fire, one of the Predator Plant Scorpio, one of Cobra and one Instant Fusion. Uh, this package was crazy for me all weekend when I went first and I resolved this I always won. Uh, theory on this Colosseum, uh, three times, three regulars, three Borea, one Alasia, one Foom, and one Ain. So you have your regulars, that is always a good card to resolve because it applies a lot of pressure, it's a negate, it can run over stuff. Versus Runic Sprite, it's so good because they don't have a battle phase and if your theory on stick on board, they're very difficult to get uh, to sort of deal with because they just generate more and more advantage over turns with your Colosseum on board. Uh, three Borea because it's a good mill and it's the search of the deck, of course. And then Eliza, uh, Elasia, this is the new one out of Power of the Elements. Uh, you can discard one card and special summon a Therian out of your spell trap zone with this card. So you can make Hope Harbinger really easy on your end boards with this. Foom is amazing because you can target a Therion monster in your spell trap zone and one card your opponent controls and bounce both of them to the hand. And Ein was a nice addition for some removal that you definitely need in this deck. Um, sometimes in your main, main phase too. And also to, to destroy maybe the, the field spells that are in the current format or some back row. 3 3 on charge, like I said, is one of the best cards and going second is... It, it's like it's sort of like resolving a lure with Thunder Dragon Raw in your hand, like... Uh, you, you just get more... This, uh, you just get the same uh, amount of cards back that you invested in the card, but you also get a card in the grave that helps you setting up your theory on plays. Or if you mill your... Uh, or if you discard your Agira system... It, it's just crazy because the Agira system in the grave once again gives you a card back. Three Agira system, <laughs> it's a foolish burial, and if you mill it, it's one of the craziest cards. Mind that this can uh, also add Therion cards, not only monsters, so you can add your Colosseum. And one Therion cross, because sometimes when you go first, you want to search this if you already have access to your Colosseum, and you don't want to just randomly search a Therion charge and randomly draw two cards. So the Therion cross says when your opponent activates a monster effect while you control a Therion monster, you can uh, either negate it or banish it. But if you have Agira system in your graveyard, you can activate both. So versus many decks, this is very, very good. If you banish their Sheeran in hand that they activate, if you negate their Kid Colors, if you negate their uh, their Sprite monsters, it's very, very good. Um, you also have three Sheeran and three Halfness. This was very clear to me because Sheeran is very good with any Therian monster in your hand because it gets your uh, engine rolling more or less. Halfness is a very good card because even though, and it was really funny because when my opponent went first and I resolved this on them and I didn't mill a tier lament because I don't play that many, they were always sort of, um, uh, you know, they thought that I, I missed my mill, but uh, I mill Therions, which if you mill Therions and you have a Therian in hand, it's full combo basically, right? <laughs> uh, it's so, so good. It applies a lot of pressure and then having the body on board for Dark is very, very, very good. You have one Rhino Heart, one Merly, and one Field Spell. So this ratio might, um, you know, uh, confuse a, a lot of people or might make you think that this is a bit random. Uh, there is actually some reasoning. So Rhino Heart, you want to play one because you want to have access to Kaleido Heart in your deck. You can also search this with, with your Kikalos. So um, it makes sense in that regard. Sometimes you want to search this with your Field Spell or your Saliac that you mill. So I think that one was definitely uh, right for this card. Merly also uh, as a one-off because you want to normal summon your Lone Fire, of course, most of the time. Even Scorpio is a good normal summon. So I didn't want to have over uh, six normal summons in my deck. I mean, that's already um, maybe quite a lot. You ideally, I think, only want to have five. But the Merly... Um, you, you really needed to mill your 8 cards and have access to a Sprite Elf. And then one Field Spell, just because you play Terraforming, 
Um, but once again, this is a Therion deck more than a Telemann deck. So this is a control deck. Don't think of this as a combo deck. Um, the only exception is when you draw Lone Fire and you go first, then your deck becomes an incredibly strong combo deck that uh, the board can mostly not be broken because you will summon something like um, Sprite Elf, IP, Hope Harbinger in the regulars with maybe a Foom under it or something like that. I mean, that's the ideal board. Uh, you can maybe sometimes get a Sully Egg in there or a Cross. Um, so the, the boards just become so good and your follow-up with the Agira system in the grave makes it so on the following turn, um, you you just uh, you just add back a regulus or something and uh, and destroy all their cards by battle and get more advantage with Colosseum. So it's very hard to grind with the second keep up. There's also not a lot of people playing Crow, so Agira system becomes a lot better. Um, not a lot of uh, spell removal for the graveyard. So one Saliak, I I think in hindsight I wouldn't play this card anymore. It was a bit weird or random sometimes in my hand. I I think that you you don't really need it for this deck really. Uh, the theory was maybe a bit that you, this is a good mill, of course. It's a decent card to draw as long as you have your Telemann access. But I think in hindsight it was just a bit too weak uh, or a bit too too inconsistent. Uh, the Terraforming uh, is, of course, very, very strong in this in this deck. Two Desires, one of the best cards. I think this won me multiple games uh, alone. Uh, I'm very glad I played this, even though it conflicts kind of with the Lone Fire engine. But if you draw your Scorpio or your Lone Fire, with this, I mean, Lone Fire is not even that bad because you can still summon out the Borea. Uh, if you if you draw your Scorpio or your Cobra, I mean, it happens, but still one of the best cards. The Foolish is, is obviously good because it mills a Tillman monster or Ethereum monster, so it gives you access to both. And then Super Poly and Droplet for your going second cards. Droplet, I think I would cut in hindsight. I thought it was very good in the first rounds when I played it versus Rogue. I played versus Eldritch, Drytron, Virtual World the first three rounds, but... Uh, after that, it was not that strong anymore. I sided it all out uh, also later on in the tournament versus Runic Sprite. Uh, even though in, in, in theory, it's, it's it's just a very good generic uh, card. And it also gets your Therions in the grave, which is which is kind of nice. And Super Poly was broken all event, uh, really. Like, people summon in red and elves still uh, when they go first in my top 32 match, also my opponent, and then just activated Super Poly on them. And it's just so much pressure. For the extra deck, two Kikalos, one Kaleido Heart, one Mud Dragon, one Garura, one Dragostapelia. This is more or less the standard ratio. You can also play one Chimera Flegia. You can make this on your turn one combo if you um, go through your Lone Fire and Cobra and Scorpio plays, because you can uh, use one of them and your Tillman monster to summon this out. On the standby face of your opponent, this card can search Super Polymerization as a follow up. So it also applies a lot of pressure. You can also, my opponent, Super Polyed me, and then you can banish their Garura uh, with this card and made me be able to OTK. So I, I think this card was nice and I would play it again. Uh, the Hope Harbinger, you can make this very often on your first turn board. And I think this was very strong with IP in the Appalosa, so they cannot attack into your stuff. Redoer was decent. I think I made it maybe once or twice. Uh, it's not a necessary card, but um, it's, it's nice to have. Uh, IP Mascarena, you make this on your first turn board a lot. Cross Sheep uh, for the combo. Sprite Elf, as I mentioned, is one of the best cards. Dark for going second and Unicorn and Appalosa for your IP targets mostly. This this extra deck is, um, ironically, because this was the reason I got a game loss in the end, uh, one of the most flexible uh, things of your of your deck because you don't need to play Camera Fleegia. You don't technically need to play uh, a card like Redoer and uh, you also don't have to play Unicorn. It was just nice cards to have. You also definitely don't need the two Kit Colors in this version. I think that one Kit Colors would have been enough. There was just a lot of stuff that uh, was redundant, so I put a lot of cards in my extra deck um, that, that, that will maybe have some utility or maybe could come in, um, but, but, but mainly you're going to play with uh, the one Kit Colors, uh, the Garura, the Dragostapalia, Hope Harbinger, and your Cross Sheep and IP and Elf. And the side deck was probably the most terrible thing about my deck. I mostly, uh, I have to say, I almost never sided uh, cards. Gamma was the only card I regularly sided with Pancratops. Everything else was just so bad. And it's just because I had to submit, submit the deck list so quickly. And I was not uh, prepared for uh, switching because I was very sure I was going to play the Shadow deck. So I put in three TC Boot. This is a great card in theory, but I didn't face any Fluanderes, thank God. So I was able to dodge that matchup entirely. Gamma was 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 nice, but it, it was not the game changer I hoped it was going to be. Versus Runic Sprite is just not strong enough. Mostly they can still on the, end on a reasonable board. And no one put... Uh, uh, any any like any like uh, c crazy win conditions uh, on me that that this card would have would have stopped right like like Dweller for example the Therion version doesn't really uh, die to as, as as easily so uh, I don't know if I would play this card again it's just a very solid going second card in general but 
we'll have to see how the format develops now. Pancrodops was a nice all weekend. Uh, really, I have to say that I drew, I drew this card maybe three or four times and it was really nice. Winter Cherries was terrible. I would not recommend to play this. Even before the event, I was not of the opinion that this card was going to be very strong because if you banish their elves versus Runic Sprite, they're still going to end on a lot of cards. But uh, I don't know. A, fr a friend, uh, <laughs> a friend uh, sort of convinced me last second, but it was not a good card at all. Uh, spell cancel I played only for Mystic Mine. Uh, I think in theory this is okay. You can side out your lone fires, uh, but uh, was not never sided in of course. And versus Runic Sprite I don't side this in because the Lava Golem tech was all over the place. Everyone played uh, a very similar list to to Joshua Schmidt's uh, list, so you have to be aware of that. And uh, you can you cannot put up an Elf plus a spell canceler or something. And Cowboy, I never made the entire tournament. I just uh, played so quickly. I tried to play very quickly because, of course, our combo burns in, in time as well, right? So if you go instant fusion, so you, you usually have to try to play very quickly with this deck. Uh, and yeah, uh, I mean, I mean that's uh, that's the deck. Uh, top 16, it, it was a nice tournament. Uh, it was my first YCS top, so I, I guess that's something uh, very cool. I'm very glad that I... I managed to do it with this deck. If you have any ideas on the deck or like any thoughts of like what do you think when you see this? Is it maybe totally random for you or or do you think this might have potential? Uh, let me know what you think and uh, it was very... Uh, yeah, it was nice to be in front of the camera uh, after all this time again. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully sooner than last time and bye.